Welcome to the Confederate Support Forum, where each episode we discuss issues related to one of the largest problems in America, child support. Hi, my name is Kai Patterson and I'm your host. In this episode, we'll discuss the federal crimes related to helping someone avoid paying child support. And we're going to show you what legal steps you can take against individuals that help non-custodial parents avoid paying child support. Welcome back. We're discussing issues related to individuals that help non-custodial parents avoid paying child support. To discuss this issue, we have a team of attorneys. We have Alexandra Stremler, who's a family court lawyer with more than 19 years experience in family law. We have Ben Kelson, who's our legal analyst. And we have Samuel Fields, who's a collections attorney that specializes in collecting debts. Welcome. Thanks, Kai. Thank you, Kai. Welcome. How can a custodial parent take legal action against an individual such as an employer or family member that helps a non-custodial parent avoid paying child support? Well, the key thing in that situation is that either the employer or the family member of the non-custodial parent is committing some sort of fraud in assisting the non-custodial parent in avoiding paying the child support. Absolutely. So depending on the circumstances, there are a lot of remedies under both state and federal law to assist the custodial parent, but it always depends on the circumstances of that individual case. Okay, let's talk about some of those um, remedies. Okay. Well, like if you have a vehicle that was transferred, okay. with you can look up the chain of title to see right. when the vehicle was transferred, how much it was transferred for, who it was transferred from. If it is one of these situations where the non-custodial parent is just trying to avoid paying child support and moving it to his mom or his aunt or so, this vehicle that's expensive, you're going to be able to find that in the chain of title and be able to file a fraudulent conveyance action or a fraudulent transfer action against both the person the vehicle was transferred to and the, the non-custodial parent Per, the non-custodial parent who transferred the asset. Wow. So both individuals could be, li could be liable under state law for a fraudulent transfer just if they're doing it to avoid the custodial parent child support. Wow. That, so what you're saying is, is that when you, in some instances, you have a history that will enable you to track the movement of assets. But what happens if you have an employer who's helping someone hide their income. What actions can be taken there? Well, in that situation, you can put the pr debt pressure on the employer because most circumstances, the employer are doing it because they want to assist their employee. Correct. But once it comes back on them where they could be in trouble with both the Department of Labor, the state tax board, the federal taxes, the federal government with regarding taxes, and the Labor Department, it really changes their tune right away whether it's more important to help this individual employee or to protect their business. Okay. Can a custodial parent put an employer or family member on notice if they know that that person's actually helping the non-custodial parent pay? Sure. As a practical matter, you pick up the phone and you can call them. <laughs> and honestly, I, mom doesn't want to hear my next calls to the police department do something or don't. I mean, you know what's going to happen suddenly? Non-custodial parent is going to be pushed by his mom, her mom. Gotcha. Ben, you specialize in white, I mean, not, not that you specialize, but you've dealt with many cases in white collar fraud. Correct. Talk to me. Okay. So it's important that we remember that within the United States legal system, okay. as in with most systems, okay. we have both a civil law legal right. system as well okay. as a criminal legal system. Correct. One of the things that we've been focusing on mostly in this issue is that of the civil system. The civil system is the one which is imposing these rules and these orders that we've been talking about of child support and enforcement of child support. Um, in this type of a situation, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting scenario in that it ends up involving both the 
civil system as well as the criminal system. And you have it in a wide variety of ways. As Mr. Fields has just mentioned, you could be talking about federal authorities, you could be dealing with, civil, with the state authorities as well, local authorities, um, simply by w changing, uh, playing around with the numbers of, of salaries and hiding money or paying off the books, as was mentioned before. One of the things that's important to remember is that uh, one of my favorite judges likes to say that there are many people who will be out there to give you advice and help you and do things. There's very few people who are going to sit in a jail cell for you. Um, and so <laughs> it's very important to remember that as you asked, and as Alex pointed out, notice can be given simply by picking up the phone and saying, I know what you're doing, and my next call is going to be the police. And as much as the mom might want to help out her son uh, and to keep him from having to pay. Or the custodial parent. I like to. Right. More but I'm saying, right, but I'm saying in other words, if, let's say, for example, the non-custodial parent's mom knows what's going on, so as much as she may not want to, as much as she may want to help her son, the non-custodial parent out, gotcha. as soon as she hears that the police might be involved, or the FBI, well, or the IRS, right. right, nobody wants to have the black van with the guys with the little earpieces showing up and picking somebody up. So suddenly that may change her, uh, her tune just a little bit, or maybe change her focus of how it is that she would like to suggest to her son, to the non-custodial parent, to handle this matter. And I would point out that um, tax evasion is a major, major issue. Um, Al Capone was eventually only convicted on tax evasion charges. That's true. So we're not necessarily talking about simply about issues of fraud uh, or things like that. Um, and so therefore, this is something which can be a very, very significant and serious issue. And as Mr. Fields has mentioned, it's important that people realize and the non-custodial parents realize that you're better off dealing with it before somebody shows up and puts a pair of handcuffs on you. And you know, another piece that's important is the interstate issue. Correct. And one of the things that a lot of folks don't know is there is a uniform child support enforcement um, statute, which is a fabulous way of having interstate cooperation with law enforcement. And in fact, if you get an order in one state, even if the jurisdiction is different, the enforceability of that order is going to go to all 50 states. Ben, let's use some specific examples to talk about specific crimes so that we can give our viewers an understanding of how much time a person could be potentially looking at for various crimes. Let's take helping someone hide their income by not reporting their income as an employer. What are we looking at? Well, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about reporting, putting somebody down as an independent contractor when they're, uh, when they're actually a salaried employee, so then you could be looking at tax evasion or things of that nature. Uh, and that, again, depends on how significant the, act, the, the difference is. And the amount. And the amounts that you're talking about, as well as, whether, as well as how long it's been going on for. Right. Um, it also depends, as was discussed at length during the first segment, is what is exactly is it that the employer knows or doesn't know. Okay. And that's going to go into the aggravated and mitigating factors okay. uh, analysis. And the question that they're going to have is, what did this guy or what did the employer think that they were doing? And the biggest um, government entity that's going to care about this is the Department of Labor of that yeah. state. Right. They're going to care Absolutely far right. more than any other bureaucracy in the state because they want their payroll taxes yep. and they want their money. So. Any employer that the Department of Labor decides they're going to go investigate is going to go through a nightmare. Okay, gotcha. With everything involved, not just with the one employee that maybe he's trying to assist that yeah, absolutely right. the attention, right. but with every employee across the board. Right. So that headache would be basically like your restaurant being shut down where the Food and Drug Administration analyzes the entire restaurant, or L&I analyzes the entire restaurant. None of them want it. Okay. What about illegal transferring of assets? Well, the back, uh, right. So illegal transfer of assets is an interesting problem, and that would be something that was talked about before, which is things that you can trace. So, for example, if a guy's been driving around in a BMW and transfers that asset over to his sister or his brother-in-law or his mother or girlfriend or whatever it may be, um, then a person such as uh, Mr. Fields is going to go and look and see what was the chain of custody, the chain of title. Did they pay the full value for that BMW, or did they actually pay a dollar, or did they right. pay nothing? Right. And that would that would be a question as to whether or not that is actually a legitimate sale or meant for the purposes of hiding that asset. At which point, the custodial parent would be able to go to the court and challenge the challenge that sale uh, and be able to see, try to seize that asset. Um, but to just to jump back to the employers, the more serious thing that an employer would face is the question of paying off the books. 
And that becomes a much more serious issue than the one of the independent contractor. Okay, right. So paying somebody off the books. Right. So for example, if you have somebody who's working and whatever their job may be, in general that particular type of a field should be making fifty thousand and they're only showing twenty thousand. Gotcha. Right? But but their hours are forty hours a week, then that may be a problem and that could actually end up posing an posing a difficulty for the employer as far as you were asking before regarding uh, something along the lines of fraud or tax evasion. And that's a much more likely situation to cause a problem with the criminal justice system rather than the independent contractor situation which you were asking about earlier. So somebody could be looking at jail time for doing that? Potentially, but again it's much more likely in that situation Correct. than somebody who's merely putting somebody down as an independent contractor when in fact they really are a salaried employee. That's really more of a financial issue uh, which, as Mr. Fields mentioned, is more going to be of a question for payroll taxes than it's going to be an issue of, of uh, the criminal justice system. Well, this has been very insightful. I think we've now provided custodial parents with steps that they can take against individuals that help not custodial parents avoid paying child support. Thank you. Are you owed child support? Does the non-custodial parent of your children avoid your calls, hide their income and assets, or has relocated to prevent paying child support? The Custodial Support Foundation provides you with the services to begin receiving the child support your children need. Call 855-851-HELP now to receive the help your children deserve.